rendered it barely able to fight even a local war. To Hitler, the poor performance by the Red Army in Finland is further evidence of the inferiority of Slav to Aryan and of the vulnerability of the Soviet Union. Meanwhile, in public, the pivotal relationship blossoms. As the year 1939 ends, Hitler cables Stalin, I would like to extend my true, sincere greetings on your 60th anniversary. I propose we raise our glasses to Comrade Stalin, who leads us along the bright road to communism. Stalin replies without irony, the friendship between us, sealed in blood, has every reason to be long-lasting. Soviet and Nazi hands are tightly clasped. Russian raw materials flow westward. At the border where the rail gauge changes, grain and oil are transferred to German wagons. As a final act of abject appeasement, Stalin returns to the Gestapo German communists who have fled to Moscow. On the vital Western Front, the phony war continues. Allied forces remain on the defensive, the French behind their unbreachable Maginot line. Parcels from home relieve the boredom. Hitler is content to fight on one front at a time. In May 1940, the Germans launch a spectacular Western offensive, invading the Low Countries and splitting the French and British armies with rapacious panzer thrusts. Goebbels proclaims Moscow gives us every support. As each of the small capitals of Northwest Europe fall, Stalin closes down the Soviet embassies, a tacit recognition that might is right. In London, Chamberlain is called on to resign. Winston Churchill becomes Prime Minister and struggles to rally France and Britain against the spectre of a devastating defeat. But the German army is unstoppable. Millions of civilians flee northern France. The French government leave Paris amid scenes of chaos on the roads. At Dunkirk, the British Navy evacuates 330,000 British and French soldiers under fire. The prominent choreographer Moiseev recalls a concert in Moscow at this time when Stalin approached him and asked, Stalin said to me, can you put on a show depicting the defeat of Britain and France? There was a deathly silence and everyone understood that the conversation had taken a new turn. Stalin grinned and said nothing for a moment. Then he said, okay, you just sit there, and went off. And that was that. But this episode surprised everybody. And I immediately thought, what is he talking about? If Britain and France are defeated, we will be left completely alone with Hitler. Paris falls. And the French sign a punitive armistice. At Hitler's insistence, the same rail carriage is brought to Compiègne, where the French had taken Germanist surrender in the First World War. It is a result Hitler has dreamed of since he was in the trenches. Berlin celebrates the fall of France where vast new industrial and agricultural riches have fallen under German control. But there are spoils for Stalin, too. In the north, Lithuania, Latvia and Estonia are annexed, again in accordance with the secret agreements made with Hitler. In all, Stalin has gained 175,000 square miles of territory, 
and 20 million new inhabitants for the Soviet Union. As the NKVD move in, thousands of his new subjects are shot. Tens of thousands more are immediately arrested and transported to swell the workforce in the Gulag. But in the midst of foreign policy triumph, Stalin can always spare time for old enmities. Denied asylum in many countries of the West, Leon Trotsky, Stalin's old rival, is now safe, as he believes, in Mexico, far from the grasp of the NKVD. He is nevertheless tracked down and murdered by a hard killer, Raymond Mercado, an ice pick in the victim's brain. Yet, for the Soviet-German special relationship, there are already clouds on the horizon. Molotov goes to Germany to discuss spheres of influence between Germany, the Soviet Union, Italy and Japan. In fact, as we now know, the Japanese Foreign Minister Matsuoka has already been told that Germany will expect Japan's involvement in any war against the Soviet Union and that Hitler has already signed Instruction 18, ordering preparations for the attack on the Soviet Union to continue. But the Japanese are not to be tempted. Tokyo decides it would prefer to keep its own back door to the Soviet Union firmly locked. Matsuoka therefore flies to Moscow to sign a treaty of neutrality. There are more toasts and formal poses. And Stalin accords Matsuoka the signal honor of a personal send-off. But Stalin now is a rabbit caught in headlights. On the day that Stalin signs a pact of friendship with Yugoslavia, Hitler attacks in the Balkans. Is this to be the last blitzkrieg, or will the Soviet Union be next? What is certain is that if Hitler follows Yugoslavia with an attack on the Soviet Union, Stalin's gamble to grab the spoils of a disintegrating Versailles will have failed disastrously. It will have left the Soviet Union isolated without an ally in the world. Stalin has made too many bitter enemies in the party and the army. His own position as leader, his life is in the balance. He cannot even admit the possibility that he has miscalculated that Hitler is about to attack. 